This is Paul from Market Square Heroes. Welcome to Legends of Rock 2019 with headliners for Sunday night, the Bohemians. Hello. Hello. Congratulations on probably being one of the most successful tribute bands ever. Absolutely phenomenal. Kind words. <laughs> I'm not sure they're completely accurate, but yeah, <laughs> we're relatively successful. But when you first started this, was it much different to what it is now? Uh, well, it depends who you're talking to. We all joined at different times, okay. really. Like, Kevin's probably the one to answer that. We're a lot busier you? now, so yeah. yeah, that's a lot different. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot more work. Was it, so, was it difficult back in... 96, was it? 96. It was, it was a lot more fun, I suppose, because it was, I suppose, more of a hobby and, and just an excuse to get out there. Well, it still is, in, in that sense, to get out there and play the songs that we really enjoy doing. And, and just, you know, and, and the passion and the enjoyment and all of that and, and the fun ele elements. But certainly over the years, it becomes more like a business, I suppose. So it okay. becomes a little bit more serious, but it's still a lot of fun as well in many ways. But, you, but we all look at those three levels of tribute and your attention to detail yeah. is, you know, is definitely at the top there. Well, that's, a, that's the job. I mean, you know, we, we're trying to impersonate one of the greatest rock bands out, you know, and uh, people are, are going to be very... Uh, they get, they pay attention to the they they if you don't pay attention to detail they'll they'll notice. So you've got a lot of uh, uh, Queen fans who, who want you to 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 do a good job. So uh, you know I mean there, there's so many aspects of what we do that that we have to study quite closely to to get as close as we can. Okay. So going back to the piano then, did you learn to play the piano for the band? Or yes. Did you play the piano yeah. I mean I, I was guitarist for. 30 odd years and I, I joined the band and they wanted me to mime a couple of songs on piano so I said well I'm not going to do that uh, so I learned to play piano instead so I kind of translated my uh, ability on guitar uh, on, onto the piano it took a few months and then uh, after uh, three months I could just about play a couple of songs and uh, after about a year um, I, I had the whole we had the whole set worked out so that kind of gave us a, another that, you know another authentic point to, yeah, yeah, to play on yeah. Chris, your hair is iconic. What else could you do other than being Brian May? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I've spent all my life as a rock guitarist, and you know that kind of went with a, with a, your lifestyle, really. You know, so it wasn't such a dramatic thing when I started doing the the Brian May thing. You know, right. you paid a bit more attention, and you know, so that it's, it represents him a bit more. Yeah. And really, that's what we've done with everything, with you know, with guitars and amplifiers and the sounds and the song and the performance for the bands. And we said earlier when Kevin was talking about the early days, the big thing for us, obviously, was as the band evolved, that the um, there was a lot more structured the business itself with the, you know with the festivals and yeah. the big gigs and all that. Where in the early days of the tribute scene, there was you know lots of bands playing very small venues and not really knowing if it would go any further and then you add some of the big boys at the time you know that were doing mid big gigs but yeah. now there seems to be a structure that you know if you get yourself together that there is there are sort of platforms for you to perform on so like that we did with the Rhodes Rock yeah. thing and the Legends here yeah. you know and yeah, quite the, cheap tribute festivals yeah, quite yeah a few the those. festivals and venues where you know that they're, they're obviously selling a lot of tickets now for tribute bands mm. so it's looked upon as artists that are you know that are there's obviously a demand. Yeah, yeah. There's a whole theatre circuit out there that, that, that's heavily populated by tribute bands, so, you know, that's good for us. Here's a question for you then. My kids are at a younger age and they're listening to music like Dappy and Stormzy. Do you think the generation that is us, as we get older, the younger generation won't be Queen or the like, or the ACDC bands? Do you think well, there's a market for that other music definitely yeah um, I mean I've got a, my 15 year old boy is, is a mad queen fan okay um, and my daughter is as well and uh, it, you do find that it's a bit of a cliche but it, it does seem to appeal to, to all ages I mean we get the, the, the age spectrum goes from the you know, very youngest kids to the, the original fans who are all in their 70s now you know so um, uh, that that's that's good for us, but I mean it's just the strength of the material and the and the uh, the, the 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 mass appeal of the of the songs. You know they had such an eclectic mix of styles that there's something there for everyone. So no, I'd definitely say and, and some of the kids are 
well into their rock stuff, you know, and yeah. they'll come up and, you know, can you play Stone Cold Crazy or do you oh. know White Queen or, you know, I mean, they, they, they listen to the albums mm. and that's young kids, you know. So, that's good, yeah, that definitely. It gives a chance for them to come through. Yeah, it keeps Absolutely. it all alive, doesn't it? It's a surprise to us sometimes when yeah. you do a, when you do a club and, and, you know, you can have the majority of people, will, you know, wouldn't have been born when Queen were around even. And they still, you know, they, they know all the staff and they've obviously bought tickets to come in. But that is a bit of a surprise sometimes that you see such a young audience being a part of it as though it was something very special to them. When we, we, we all know they weren't really around, could, couldn't have possibly yeah. seen Queen, you yeah. know. So we were Queen fans growing up? Yeah, well, I was, yeah, definitely, huge, yeah. Huge Queen fans. Yeah. I mean, I remember being at Nedworth on the, on the last one. Right. And, and it was just a great day. Right. And mm. unfortunately it was the last one. Yeah. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. It was. So if, if you're going to bring in new material at this point where you're so busy, how do you get to rehearse? Or do you just know it all now that you've got enough in the back catalogue? Well, we've got a, yeah, I mean, we, we've got a, a big catalogue of, uh, of songs that we've built up over in a number of years, you know, and uh, it's more really a case of which songs we want to concentrate on in a particular year. You know, one year we, we did like all the early stuff and the yeah, As It Began tour that we did and um, another year we, we sort of started focusing more on the, the later stuff, the, like the 90s uh, stuff of the last couple of albums. So it really just depends on how, what we feel like, you know, we, we, it's nice to mix it up, you know, but there's, there's so many songs uh, to, to pick from that we're sport for choice, really. We had a, you know, Rob's had an idea a couple of years ago about concentrating on a lot of the 90s stuff, because of course Queen never got to play that live. Mm -hmm. As you said yourself, you know, Nebworth was yeah. the last live yeah. performance and all that. So it was quite nice for us, you know. We were doing we were doing songs, and Rob suggested, and we worked on and introduced into the set, you know, stuff like "Show Must Go On" and all that, you know. Where obviously that Queen didn't have that opportunity. Yes. So it's quite nice for us to do that. Obviously, the record buying public were very aware of those songs, you know, and even sort of sort of the some of the tracks like the, obviously the last official video that Freddie was on. These are the days of our lives, you know. Mm -hmm. That's currently in the set for us, you know. And that's, that's really cool. And it paces the set because there's a lot of rock stuff. You know, we are really sport for choice of material. Yeah, loads of stuff. I mean, there's there's a there's kind of a a core of songs that obviously you're going to have to have, Bohemian Rhapsody and Don't Stop Me Now and Another One Bites and there's probably about an hour's worth of material that you have to do. Yeah. You know, but the other hour, if we're doing a theatre show, uh, it, you can do what you like. You know, and we we generally most of the songs are going to be off the hits albums yeah. because that's what most people want. But you know, we're, we're allowed to, we always have one or two where we just go, let's do this one, you know. <laughs> and that, this one's for us, you know. But uh, we, we know all the, the more obscure stuff, but you, we're savvy enough to know that m the majority of the audiences are, are going to want to hear the, the hits. What do people want to hear as an encore? Uh, well, I don't know what they want to hear, but they're always going to get We Will Rock You, We Are The Champions, because <laughs> yeah. yeah. you can't really follow that. Yeah. You know? yeah. we, we put Friends Will Be Friends in the middle of it, and that, that's the set encore, and that's always been the, the encore, and Absolutely. very occasionally we'll come back on and do one more, you know, yeah. if they're sort of Germans, for instance, and they don't understand that the show's over. You know? <laughs> <laughs> He's all right, we'll do Tie Your Mother Down then, or you know, whatever, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's 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 quite structured in that way, in that in that from sort of Bohemian Rhapsody onwards, it's kind of Live Aid stroke Wembley '86. You know, it, there, there is a structure that, that there are certain live structures that we do tend to follow. You know, we'll mm. start with uh, you know Wembley '86. You know, One Vision, Seven Seas of Rye, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kind of Magic, those, those songs, um, and then we'll the the the, the latter part of this the. the the end of the show is, is going to be sort of Bohemian Rhapsody, Hammer to Fall, Radio Gaga, all that stuff. And, and of course, we were Rocky, we are the champions. So it's quite, you know, it, we, we've managed to sort of fit the, the songs together so that they, we can get the most out of them. And, you know, a, a lot of that is, is just copying what the original guys did and, and doing that, you know. Yeah. You're closing Light Legends this week, uh, tonight, in fact. As ever, yeah. <laughs> We always get the graveyard shift. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How, how has it changed since you first started? Has it grown? Yeah, well, it has grown. Yeah, I mean, we've uh, our first one. I think we we came in uh, and did Rhodes Rock uh, two thousand ten, um, and we weren't able to do the next Legends, which was eleven. So I think our first Legends must have been twelve. Yeah. And I think we've only missed one year. I don't think we did it in 16, but we've, uh, so we've seen it grow from, I mean, it was already quite well established when we arrived. It'd been going a few years. Um, 
but it's definitely you can see that it's of the same venue but the the audience has, has grown bigger you know you see familiar um, faces in the crowd oh yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. We, we, we know them all from roads so oh, okay. we did we did four of those that um, was the, that was one of the big positives for us was that that when we did roads rock all of a sudden there was all these people that bought into us because we bought into roads etc so they would turn up at th in our th uk shows you know and obviously we get a lot of followers on facebook etc mm. and because, the bands as well yeah mm. and, 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 it, and we very rarely play with other bands obviously when we do theatres but the only time we do get to play with bands is in festivals and the most chance that we get is was roads and legends because obviously there's bands here all the time yeah, you know? yeah. it's a kind of a networking thing that goes on with, between the bands which is quite, which is also quite nice you, yeah. know, you kind of get, got a lot of friends that we've played together and we you know we know each other and uh, and then of course the the, the fan the uh, the punters you know the the roads rockers the the legenders whatever you want to call them they're, they're all you know we've known them for years yeah. and you know so it's yeah it's a bit of a, a, a sort of a community it was a great kind of family atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. We, yeah. we were watching the Freud Effect um, the other day, and we saw Eddie up there in his, in his dark side of the moon pajamas. <laughs> and, and they were what a whale well of a time. <laughs> and he went on stage, and everybody knew Eddie's name. At least he wasn't wearing his main key. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, God not, I'm not telling you what he's, he's saving he's, that for us, isn't he? Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm not telling you what he's wearing. Now. What's next for the Bohemians? Where do you go after this? Abroad. What? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going in a couple of days. Um, we're going to the Ukraine for four shows. Then we come home for two days. Then we go out to Germany and do nine shows. Germany, Luxembourg, Switzerland, uh, Belgium. And then we drive straight from there to Slovenia and we do four shows in Slovenia and Croatia with a, with an orchestra. Sounds and then good. we come back. We have four days off and then we've got seven gigs in the next ten days all after that. that. UK then we go on holiday and then we come back and then we've got another ten days in the next uh, whatever. You know, it, it just kind of, it's very busy. Uh, I mean, we the the film hasn't done us any harm. I was going to ask. <laughs> we rushed off our feet, really. and yeah. uh, But, I mean, you know, we, we're always quite busy, but, you know, this year it's gone mad. Okay. So, uh, that's, yeah, that's what's next for us. <laughs> so if anybody wants to buy a ticket... Where's the website? Where's the Facebook? Thebohemians.com. Um, so www.thebohemians.com. Nice easy one. All we're the dates there. are there. Yeah, we're on Facebook. And and forward links slash links. the Bohemians Queen Tribute, I think, is the Facebook. So yeah. Facebook forward just, slash the Bohemians yeah. Queen Tribute. It's all up there. So just go on and all, all the all the dates are there, and uh, <coughs> yeah, it's, it's quite nice. If anybody sort of put, comes up and says. Are you playing in wherever? You know, we can go out and give them two or three dates. You know, oh, so that's quite. Like it's yeah, it's yeah. definitely like that at the moment. Definitely. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank thank you. Absolutely thank you. brilliant. Pleasure. This has been Paul for Market Square Heroes at Legends of Rock with the phenomenal The Bohemians. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. We'll see you on the road. <laughs>